Hi, I'm Scott. Welcome back to Canard Boulevard. No, we're not going flying today. So I'm out at the airport and as you can see, it's a frosty day. It's actually really cold out here. I've brought my uh, RV with me covered in snow and because it has a furnace inside so I can go inside and get warm. So let's take a walk inside the hangar and I'll tell you why we're here. Well, obviously, we're not flying because uh, we still have no brakes and I have started ordering tons and tons of parts to rebuild the whole brake system. So these old cal Cleveland calipers here, which really don't have enough power to stop this airplane correctly or safely, are coming off and a new set of Matco triple cup pucks are going on and all these, this plastic Nyloflow line that's coming out. Right now that plastic line runs all the way up in there and then inside there and then up to the front and to where the brake pedals are. That's all coming out. The, uh, the legs are getting stainless steel and then it's uh, got, we got some flex lines to go down to the calipers for where the, the calipers move so we don't want the, the stainless steel flexing. And then it goes up to the gear bulkhead and then from there We've got aluminum hard line going all the way up to the uh, master cylinder. Well, not quite to the master cylinders. I'm putting in a parking brake. I really need a parking brake on this airplane because when I come up and uh, park, when I come to stop, when it's fueling up and there's a little bit of a, a hill like there is here at my home airport, the airplane starts to roll away as I'm getting out of it. So it'd be really nice to have a parking brake that I could just set so that doesn't happen. And then from the parking brake up to the master cylinders, I've again got flex lines, stainless braided lines. So it's a whole lot of parts and fittings, especially fittings, and you would not believe how hard it is to get fittings for this, for, for brake parts. It seems like everybody's out of stock and I had to like place orders from four or five different suppliers in order to get all the different parts that I needed. That's not why we're here today. I've only just started having some of the brake parts trickling in. Today, we're actually gonna deal with the propeller. So this is the Cato propeller. There's the old one that I had on the airplane previously. I just realized that I should probably explain to you why I'm going through all this trouble. Well, when I first got the airplane, the prop on it was 20 years old. It was a Cato prop from 2004. It was a 64 inch diameter prop and it had 78 inches of pitch. So what pitch means, I mean diameter is pretty obvious, it's how long the blades are, but pitch is the the angle of the blade and how it's measured is in inches and basically if you take one rotation of the propeller and if you if you were to consider that it was going through something other than air like jello where it was just carving well basically the the blade angle carves a spiral of 78 inches long in one rotation so the more pitch you have the sharper the angle of the blades the higher that number goes. So a constant speed prop, you could adjust it from almost zero pitch because you could get it to go flat, or you could go to infinite pitch if you feathered it or anywhere in between. We don't have the luxury of that. It's a fixed pitch prop, so you have to try and pick one that is the best of both worlds in terms of climb and cruise. So that prop, when it was on the plane, I could get around 2300 static RPM out of it. In cruise, it was probably about 2600 RPM, and that's about as high as it would go. So that prop definitely had seen better days. It, it, it was airworthy. I mean, I could put it on the airplane and fly it today, but it had seen better days, and I also wanted to see if I could get a prop that I could get a little more static RPM and top end RPM. Because the Lycoming IO360, its rated horsepower is 180 horsepower, but that's at 2700 RPM. So if you aren't getting to 2700 RPM, you aren't getting the rated horsepower out of the engine. I'm cruising at 2550, so I'm probably only getting 160-ish horsepower out of it at full power and cruise. So there's, I'm leaving power on the table in terms of the engine. So I, I wanted to get a prop that, was, that had a little bit less pitch. So I talked to Cato, and their recommendation was one of their new props. Obviously, prop design has changed in 20 years, so they had newer, better props. They recommended a 66-inch diameter prop with a 76-inch pitch. Two inches larger in diameter, two inches less in pitch. So I got that prop and I put it on and I've been running that prop for a year and a half. It's been a great prop. However, I was not getting anywhere near the performance out of the airplane that I had hoped. My static RPM actually went down. My static RPM is 
2200 RPM and that's pretty much it. That's it's, Sometimes it's 2190, 2200, it's not enough. Like I said, the lower the RPM, the lower the power, the horsepower. I mean, the torque is enormous at 2200 RPM, but the overall horsepower, which is the amount of power over a given time, is less because the engine's running much slower than it could be. If I had a, a constant speed prop and I could put it to the wall and get 2700 RPM out of it, I'd be getting full power static RPM and I'd be able to launch off the ground much shorter takeoff roll. And that's really what it's down to. I want a shorter takeoff roll. I want more power on the ground and, and more climb power. Because I was down at 2200 RPM maximum static, and stat, that means if I put full power and hold the brakes on, that's what the engine goes to. It goes to 2200 RPM and it waits there. And when I start moving down the runway as I get some air speed and the prop doesn't have to work as hard because it's got airflow going through it, then the engine speed comes up slightly. was cruising the highest I ever saw was 2550. I could get it a little bit higher if I had full power and I put it in a dive and yes it's gonna go high but you, you don't fly like that. In cruise full power at a fairly low altitude I'm seeing 2550 which is nowhere again nowhere near 2700. So I talked to Cato again and they are going to make me a new prop that is 66 inches in diameter but instead of 76 they're gonna bring it down to 73 and based on their calculations with the new prop style that should give me 2300 rpm static which is good that's that's acceptable and i should be seeing a full 2700 rpm in cruise which means i'll be getting full power at least up until i start losing out uh, power from the engine because of altitude which is a whole another issue supercharger right yeah that, that would be nice but anyway, that's that's the reason for all this, and I just thought I'd stick this in here because I figured people are going to be asking questions in the comments. Otherwise, is hey, why are you putting this? You know, getting rid of this two-year-old prop? Well, that's the reason why. All right, back to the video. So I talked to Cato, and they said no problem, we'll take care of it. So um, today we're going to take this propeller off, and I've still got all the boxes for it that I kept over there just in case. We're gonna box it up. I think what I'll do is I'll take it up to the FBO and have them pick it up from there because I don't think I can fit this in the RV. I don't have a vehicle that can fit the propeller once it's boxed up. So that's it. That's what we're gonna start on today. Time-lapse time. I was dreading this just a little bit because the last time I pulled this prop off, one of the lugs inside the extension actually galled. It is stainless steel and I had to pull the whole spindle off, the whole spool off there and send it off to Sabre to have them redo it, which meant I actually missed a trip to Florida as a result. I was going to go to Sun and Fun and that caused me not to go. But no such problems this time. The uh, I used some nickel anti seize the last time I put it on to make sure that didn't happen again and they came off just fine. So after a quick inspection, I started trying to remember how does this thing go in the box? So the, the center foam pieces are pretty obvious and then the foam pieces that go on the tips are pretty obvious and then the packing that goes around it, I figure, well, that's it'll just stick in there and fit in there, right? No problem at all. So I got the blade shoved in there. Hey, it fit, what do you know? So I start on the second one and I got the foam down in there. And of course, there's a ton of staples on the boxes that had to be pulled out as well because I didn't want to scratch the prop or, or cut myself open. Work on on the third one here and I realized oh wait I measured it and realized that the foam bit actually has to have a spacer at the bottom otherwise it's not a contact with the blade so start over again start from scratch put the blades back on and, and uh, put those spacers in with the foam bits and now I'm packaging everything back up and I can't get it to fit in there and I, the blade won't go in the foam I can't figure out why so you know, go get the bore scope shove it in there so I can see what's going wrong okay now I got it to fit and put that in there. Now I'm gonna start taping it all together and I got some of this uh, fiber tape that has uh, really, really strong fiberglass strands in it that is basically unbreakable tape. You have to cut it because you just can't break it 
So I've taped up the whole box with that to make sure it is really, really strong, can't bend, that prop is not going to be damaged. And once I had that all taped up, then uh, put the prop down and got it ready to be shipped off to Kato to get redone. Actually, well, there I did have to weigh it because Kato wanted to know how much the prop weighed. And now it's ready to go. Measurements taken. Off to Kato. Well, that was uh, quite a task. That was well over an hour to box that up. I had to figure out how exactly all the packing went inside and how to get everything set in there. I went through just over a full roll of this tape, this monofilament tape. It's got fiberglass strands in it. It's super strong. You can't break it. Uh, and it's very, very strong adhesive. So that should keep this box together. Um, it's, it's actually, it's really, really sturdy and solid. So 37 pounds, 17 ounces. It's 78 inches tall in that box. I don't know how I'm going to get it up to the FBO. I might end up just walking it up there. I don't know. I don't have a vehicle that it will fit into. But uh, I'll get it up to the FBO so that it can get picked up and uh, sent off to Cato for them to do their magic. That was not the most exciting video, but hey, not every video is exciting going flying and doing great things. But like I said, I've got lots and lots of parts arriving for the brakes, so that project is definitely starting very, very soon. I have off the most of the end of December, so I'm hoping that I can get in here and it's not too cold and I can get to work on the uh, replacing the brakes on the airplane. I first have to make up a set of stands that can I can use to jack the airplane up in the air. Wow, you can see my breath in here. Yes, it's really cold. I think it's about uh, 25 degrees right now. Uh, anyway, so yeah, I need to build a couple stands. They go underneath the strakes here, and then what you do is you tip the nose down and you put the stands underneath because the, the wing itself, as you tip it forward, this spar, which is back there, lifts up, and then you put the stand underneath, and then you lift the nose, and, and then it, it, the airplane basically levers itself up off the ground, and then you can get at the wheels. So that's uh, the next project. In the meantime, if you have any questions, comments, suggestions, leave them in the comments section below. And if you like this kind of video, click like, subscribe to the channel. Really appreciate it. Thanks for watching.